Oh, oh. That was low. That was scary, guys. I'm scared. What's good, YouTube? Today we're doing the first ever headphone review on this channel. I'm personally actually a headphone person, and I'm pretty excited to talk about the Meze 99 Classics here because I love Meze. Right, I have their Meze Elites and the Meze Lyrics, which are usually the headphones that I'm using, and those are, well, way beyond this price range. So I had to get these because you guys probably didn't know what they are, found them secondhand on the market, and I was like, oh, you know what, it's a good price, let's get them in, do a review, and hopefully more people will go there and buy these. Uh, especially because also the audience on this channel is gamers, they don't really know anything about uh, high-end audio and all of that. This isn't exactly too high-end, but it's not on the budget end either, and I'm hoping that one day when you guys sort of upgrade, move on, uh, you can look into something like this. These are the Meze 99 Classics. Meze is a Romanian-based company. Uh, with that being said, the drivers for this is made in China. Uh, they released back in 2015, so it has been quite a while now, and since then, Meze has primarily been focused on more high-end audio. These cost 500 Australian dollars and 309 US dollars. They use 40 millimeter dynamic drivers, so pretty standard compared to gaming headphones as well. Uh, they're 32 ohm only, if I remember correctly, and they're super, super easy to drive. So you can plug these straight onto your computer via your motherboard audio, and it'll still sound really, really good. I don't have the original box they came in, so I can only show you how it comes to me after, which in that case, they do come in this nice carrying pouch. So this clamshell carrying pouch is actually really premium as well. If there's one thing you guys need to know about Meze, it's that even at high-end audio, everyone acknowledges the fact that the Meze headphones have the best comfort, build quality, aesthetics, presentation, packaging, like everything that's not to do directly with sound, which can be subjective, Meze is the king. This is basic, this is premium, this is luxury, and this is what it should be. So the carrying case here, very nice and premium. And then on the inside, you'll also come with uh, a pouch. And this pouch is for storing cables. Otherwise, you also have a 6.3 to 3.5 adapter, quarter inch to 3.5 mm adapter. You have another cable, and I don't actually know what this is used for, as well as a airplane adapter for if you want to take these with you on a flight. Because if you guys have never been on an airplane, sometimes the airplane uh, audio is via these two pin jacks. With my one, I actually got another cable in it as well, which is a much shorter cable, so it's only this long. The one on the uh, inside here is much longer. I'm not too sure if it comes with both or not, but this one does have a microphone and a play pause button. So the first thing you guys got to understand is that the high-end headphones, they all have dual entry cables, which means that the cables are detachable, similar to your IEMs, unlike your, the headphones you guys are used to, where the cable is fixed. You can buy replacement cables and all of that, and you can plug and unplug them from the headphone. So they, they are dual entry, which means that one goes into each ear. The benefit of that is that the power goes directly into each driver and air cup, so you don't have wires running up the top that risk snapping or breaking. You don't have loose wires on the side. For example, Bear Dynamic does that. On other gaming headphones, they bake this big bulky thing up the top just to make sure it can contain the wire. And also it means you can change your cables, get better cables, and also support more power into them if you need it. Fit and comfort is excellent. If there's one thing that's about Meze, that's fit and comfort. I don't think a single person out there can ever complain that these are not comfortable. The only thing I can nitpick on is that the air cups are a little bit small. For me at least, I have really, really big ears. So I would prefer if they were bigger, similar to say Bear Dynamics. But for the average person, or maybe for the ladies, this is as perfect as it can get. They're lightweight, there's not too much clamp force, it's perfectly fine. Uh, also the headband does this to like stretch and accommodate for your head. It's, it's so comfortable. There's just nothing to complain about it. Now, the design, the aesthetic, you guys can go search some glamour photos. I'm sure that this video in itself isn't the best quality, but even then you can tell just how premium these are. The 99 Classics printed up the top. Meze logo, gold plated on the side, oh, these wooden air cups. There's other versions as well. One other version you guys can find is a cheaper a cheaper version called the Meze 99 Neo, which is basically they change the wooden air cups into plastic, and that also lowers the cost price a little bit. As for whether or not that affects sound, I'm not too sure. I don't have those in hand, but I don't think they really would matter. Uh, frequency response graphs might show a tiny bit of difference, but honestly, I don't really care. I just think that these are really good. Build quality, like I keep saying, Meze is king, this is king. You go to a store or you buy one of these, you pick them up, you hold them in your hand, and you just know like, damn, this is not the same as any other headphone that you guys would normally see uh, in stores, such as 
anything from the gaming brands or like even Bear Dynamics and say Audio Technica, AKG, all of that, I don't think they compare. Things like Bear Dynamics are a lot more sturdy and big and solid, but you can just tell that this is premium in quality. So on the frequency response, you can kind of tell that the headphone is bassy, right? And there's no denying it. That is also the most make and break point of this headphone. So lots of people in the audiophile community do not like these because they're bassy. And then on the other hand, you have people who love them. That bass can definitely be a bit too much depending on the situation. But nonetheless, uh, mid bass is boosted and they do sub bass surprisingly well for a dynamic driver because normally the dynamic drivers struggle with sub bass or at least in the case of headphones they do i don't think that's inherent disadvantage of the dynamic drivers it just has to do with how they're set up into headphones The bass on these is excellent for electronic, drum and bass, hard style, modern day rap, modern day pop, and anything that really thrives on bass. I think it's pretty end game worthy for those who like those kinds of genres and not wanting to go into even higher levels of hi-fi. If you're just like a person who enjoys that kind of music, you like going to raves and whatever, you also want something at home that you can just vibe to, this is pretty end game worthy in terms of bass. Things like instrumentals and acoustics might be a little bit too much and you do want to turn those down with EQ, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Mids are warm, they're extremely nice. I personally do prefer warmer mids as well, so this is right up my alley. Uh, although I would say sometimes I want to turn them down a tiny bit. Overall, I think it's really enjoyable. And treble is meze, which is somewhat muted, but nonetheless, I think it's fine. I'm pretty treble sensitive, uh, especially if you're a younger person, you're likely to be treble sensitive. So I think this is great. The tuning, at least in terms of frequency response and tuning, the summary, overall, very enjoyable, in my opinion, at least it suits my preference. I'm happy to listen to these without EQ. Whether it suits you or not is purely up to your understanding of your preferences. If you don't like bass, probably stay away from these by then uh, unless you're happy to use equalizer and turn them down i keep saying about genres if you like edm hard style drum and bass rap modern pop anything like that this is the one if you like to sit back relax and you just want to listen to some piano music or some acoustics or mozart or whatever uh you either need to stay away from this or put some eq on because you'll find them way too boosted and it kind of messes with how those kinds of songs are supposed to be presented so now on to equalizer. Uh, you can use EQ to fix a few things. I think for most of you guys, just turn down the bass a little bit and you'll be fine. Uh, I have also created a personal EQ that sounds a bit more balanced to my ears. I will put those in the description. Uh, overall, just EQ it and it'll be fine. So I'll talk about technicalities and gaming performance. In terms of resolution, I think it's good enough. And obviously, it's certainly better than most headphones that you guys would have ever tried. Assuming that you haven't tried headphones that are a lot more expensive than this. Uh, if you have been staying at that like 500 Australian dollars and below kind of price range in terms of like gaming headphones or Sony's, Beats, whatever, these will be better. If you do pursue absolute resolution, however, uh, you might want to consider looking more into planar magnetics because those generally have a lot better resolution. Uh, I do think that this is above average, but also not the peak. For the price though, it's more than enough considering aftermarket prices are available as well, all around enjoyable presentation. Obviously, IEMs will out-resolve this thing to an extent. So if you guys have been on the IEM market trying to seek resolution, uh, this won't particularly surprise you. With that being said, headphone experience is always going to be superior to IEM experience, or at least that's my opinion. My, those are my preferences. Now, in terms of sound staging, they're average, right? These are pretty average. They're not too big, not too small. I think my views and my ears might be a little bit skewed by a high-end open back headphones like these, the Meze Elites, which cost like 15 times the price or something. All in all, not too big, not too small. I think they work just fine. Now, dynamics are excellent, and that's to be expected of Meze. Uh, a lot of high-end headphones actually struggle with dynamics. Uh, some people aren't the biggest fan of dynamics. 
or they pursue resolution and a lot of the time if dynamics are really good the headphone kind of struggles with resolution i keep talking about dynamics but dynamics is what i mean by volume contrast or dynamic range how loud can one thing go and how quiet can it go when it needs to go quiet? And in those cases, resolution a lot of the time is hearing the details that you don't usually hear. But if one thing is much louder than the other, you can't hear those details. And so a lot of the time they have to sacrifice dynamics in order to present resolution to make sure the details are the same volume as whatever else is being presented so you can hear everything. Uh, whereas if you had really good dynamics, it's easy for the loud things to cover up the quieter details. Now, speed and decay are surprisingly good for a closed back headphone. And lastly, positional audio is terrible. I don't know what it is about the positional audio of this headphone, but the positional audio really, really sucks. So I do not recommend this if you are trying to buy a headphone to sweat in Valorant, CSGO, or any positional audio heavy game. If you do play games that are not positional audio heavy, like League of Legends, or single player games that need that immersion and presentation and experience, such as Witcher, uh, Assassin's Creed series, Dark Souls, Elden Ring, Monster Hunter, like any big single player or like casual for fun game that has really good soundtracks, this will be better than any of those other headphones you can find on the market for similar prices, uh, including the Bayer Dynamics. If you are still trying to find a headphone to sweat in games though, go get the Bayer Dynamics. Those have a lot better positional audio, especially for Valorant and CS and tax shooters and so on. But if you're not fully sweating anymore, then look into this. So yeah. Good headphone, I love them. They're a little bit expensive, but I'm pretty sure lots of people now can afford it. I recommend this to anyone who is not sweating games anymore and just want the most all around enjoyable thing they can find, minus positional audio that is. And obviously, if you are not a fan of bass, then maybe stay away. I just don't see how people without very specific preferences or understand their own audio will dislike this, especially given that you can just use some EQ. If you don't listen to this on a PC though, you probably won't be watching my video, but in that case, and you can't use EQ, then stay away from this if you don't like bass and warmth. That will be the end. Make sure you guys like, sub, join the Discord, follow the socials, and thank you guys for watching. I hope one of you guys gets to try this at some point. Uh, maybe I'll sell this pair as well because I don't actually need this anymore, so keep an eye out.